Let's turn our attention to Nedbank now. Jean-Pierre, I'll start with you. Last year, SA's top four banks contributed just over 46% to the Fini 15 index. Standard came in at 22.2%, first ran 12%, APSA 7.3%, but Nedbank a very disappointing 5.1%. And although the financial index under, uh, underperformed the LZ over three and five years, it outperformed in the last 12 months. So the question is, are we likely to see a repeat of this outperformance by the JC Financial Index relative to the global peers and even the local all share index? Well, firstly, the reason why Nedbank is a smaller weighting is because it has a lower free float because of Old Mutual being a controlling shareholder. Secondly, if you look at the outperformance of that index, it was mostly driven by the life assurers, not the banks. And uh, in the coming year, I still see some clouds on the horizon for our local economy, and banks are very exposed to the economy, to indebtedness, to lending activity. And because of that, I wouldn't be surprised if banks underperform. You wouldn't be surprised if banks underperform. I read an article uh, last week just speaking about market consensus and what they're expecting forward valuations to be going uh, forward. Net banks sitting on a P of 11.18, an earnings yield of 8.95 and a divi yield of 3.96. Would you agree with the consensus that it's a whole together with standard and first round that APSA is actually the only recommended buy? Well, I'm even slightly more bearish than consensus. Uh, we'll see Nedbank's results at the end of February, and there'll probably be very decent results. Earnings growth could come in around 20%. Um, but the problem is in the coming year, and what's already been discounted in share prices. So if we have continued duress in the property market, especially the residential property market, and we have an escalation in terms of uh, companies or, or properties rather in possession and uh, auctions, it could put real pressure on all four of our banks. And in that scenario, I think the banks aren't a hold, they're actually a sell. Uh, it's quite a, a dire scenario, and it's maybe not the most probable, <laughs> but it's one that I want to price when I buy a share. And at the moment, I don't think it is in the price. What about the likes of Capital being rated a hold, Able is a buy, Investec PLC is also a buy, while uh, Investec Limited is a hold? Well, there are very different trends in those banks that you mentioned. When you look at Capitec and Able in the lower end, growing in unsecured lending, uh, they are growing at an enormous rate. And the big question is, well, is that growth going to come to some big train smash when people's indebtedness comes to a point where they can't service their loans anymore? And that's an open question. And in the case of Investec, having diversified away from banking into wealth and asset management and having quite large exposure to Europe and Ireland, uh, that's why that share price has been uh, uh, depressed for, for quite a while. And I definitely see more value in those niche opportunities in the lower end and in Investec offshore uh, than I do in our big four banks. Let's come to Jonas and on the wall now. It's not looking half as bearish as what Jean Pierre's making it out to be. <laughs> <laughs> Take us through the chart. Is the banking sector looking well, better? How's Nedbank doing? Listen, I, I think as, as a whole, uh, the banking sector is looking a little bit better. But again, last year wasn't a great year for the banks at all. And uh, I mean, we can see very clearly on the on the net bank chart over here since 2009 it's pretty much uh, sideways 150 bound all the way to around the 135 uh, 135 but in all this time if we were the, what really impressed me was the action of the 200 day moving average the 200 day moving average actually maintains its course upwards which is suggesting that we are still in that long term bull, bull market as far as the banking uh, at least net bank is concerned um, we are at a price at the moment the 150 level where it's been there six previous times and failed to go through that level. So again, it's going to be a very, very strong resistance level for Nedbank to break. Uh, if it does go through the 150 level, that will be a good buying opportunity. Um, the RSI at the bottom over here, well, that's suggesting a little bit uh, that, that the market is a little bit overbought for now. So it needs, it needs a, fresh, a fresh bunch of buyers to come into that market. Now, and I feel that, that we could possibly find those buyers at around the 140, 135 level. Is there going to be a possible pullback to that 135, though, Jonathan? Yeah, I would think that there would be a, a higher potential for a pullback to the 135 level than for a, for a, a move above the 150 level. But again, I would at the 135 level, I would be a buyer rather than a seller. Now, we know that your hot stock is Standard Bank. So give us your take on NetBank. Are you bullish on it in the short, medium, and long term? I am. Uh, short term, I'm, I'm sort of warmish. I'm, I'm, I'm very cautious. I would be looking at maybe selling into the strength at the 150 level and looking to come back in again at 135 level, 130, between the 135 and the 140 level. Standard Bank is, is a little bit different. It's actually a leader, and, and it has been leading the other banks. Uh, you can see on, when, when you talk about the hot stock, it's broken a very, very long-term downward trend, and that is a very good sign for Standard Bank, and, and has proved previously that when those sort of resistance lines break, 
we do see good runs in the market. Well, we're going to come to your stock week just now. Let's get John Pierce take on NetBank. Hot or not for you? I would say not hot. And it's not a reflection of the company. It's a great company, high quality company, very good management. Mike Brown and his team have done an excellent job. It's just the price that's a problem. So I would say not hot based on the price. Not hot based on the price. Now we're going to move on to your stock picks. But before we come to you, Jonathan, I just want to get your take, uh, John Pierre, on the fact that Standard Bank was named 2011 Bank of the Year and Best Bank in four African countries, namely Botswana, Lesotho, Namibia, and Zimbabwe while Nedbank was named Best South African Bank. Now, give us your take on their lack of a strategic advantage relative to Standard Bank as far as the African footprint is concerned, and then we'll come to your stock pick, Yonit. Well, they do have a partner in EcoBank, and they'll probably up their stake with EcoBank. They've got a partnership with them in quite a few African countries. So although they are behind Standard Bank in terms of when they started to build out the African strategy, a lot of people would say, well, maybe it's a more clever strategy. Instead of rolling out a lot of branches, putting in a lot of capital, rather partner with someone else who's been in Africa a long time and go with a lower risk, lower uh, uh, exposure of your own bank capital. So um, I don't think they're at such big a disadvantage compared to Standard Bank because of their alliance with EcoBank. Well, Jonathan clearly likes Standard Bank more than NetBank as your stock pick for today. Tell us what you've got on the chart. The reason why I like Standard Bank uh, better than the NetBank, and, and not to, not to uh, say that I'm not bullish on NetBank, I, 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 I am, uh, but Standard Bank for me is a, is a, is a much better looking chart. We see a massive correction over the last two years that, that, this, that this bank has underperformed. Uh, it had a high, that, that 120 area, all the way back down to below the 80 Rand level, and now back above the, the psychological 100, 100 Rand barrier. But this action, on the very recent action price action that prices have, they've managed to break through this major two-year resistance level, which is a very, very strong sign that, a, uh, that, con that continuing buying will take place in Standard Bank. Let's come to John Pierre's stock pick. Now, what have you chosen for us and tell us why? My stock pick to do tonight is Discovery. And like I mentioned before, the Life Assurers had a very good uh, 2011. And I'm expecting another good year in 2012, especially from Discovery. Uh, they are trading at a discount to their embedded value, which is an actuarial way to find out what fair value is for an insurer. And they've uh, shown in the past that they are a disruptive company that comes in and forces other companies that compete with them to change their business well, perhaps models. perhaps not disruptive, more innovative, jean -Pierre. Yes, but they are innovative and that means that they disrupt <laughs> their competitors. Others, yes. So they uh, take some of the lunch that their competitors enjoyed before. And they've done that with medical scheme administration. They've done that with life insurance. Uh, they've done, done that with investments. And they've more recently done that with short-term insurance. Uh, they've also recently concluded some agreements uh, in the US and in China to externalize or internationalize their discovery vitality scheme. And I think that could be an extra kicker for them. Plus the operations in the UK are finally turning a corner and becoming profitable. If you put all that together at the current price, just over 40 Rand, I like discovery a lot. You like discovery a lot. Now, viewers of Hot Stocks today is a world first. I have to let it be known that for the first time in history, and Jonathan, I said I couldn't end the show without teasing you. Okay. For the first time in history, Jonathan Rom has been bullish on all three of the stocks that we have chosen. Are we going to keep this bullish and optimistic view for the rest of the year, Mr. I, I hope so, if you will, but I, I, can't, I can't stop thinking about the problems still out there. Europe is still a problem, America is still, still a problem, but let's just take it the day as it is, and I'm bullish on all three for the, for the moment.